there was a major campaign at the time took place uh, took place by the certain leaders, successfully defeated that boycott of the election. <laughs> boycott, we we'll probably going to discuss it today. Uh, successfully uh, defeated that and took part. There are a few names who actually boycotted since, since and refused to participate in that election, namely SJB Selvanayam, Balasingham, and uh, Duraisanam. I'm not saying they are the correct leaders or anything. At this, even at that stage, that element existed uh, in Sri Lanka, and that's the point I'm going to make. Uh, the, but that, so then, um, immediately after that, the post-war uh, situation is also quite briefly. I've got to finish, and we'll have to have a little discussion before we go into kind of proper discussion on what we're going to do. Is that uh, this process continued immediately after the uh, first thing the government did after this ceremony, and and there is a certain section that a tiny elite layer benefited, but also another important thing to link to this is the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth was formed in the British Empire in fear of controlling the economy because the British Empire was surviving. If it is not for the East Indian Company, the British Empire will collapse. That was the situation at one point. It's a massive income and tax are coming through that and they have to rely on it. They cannot lose it. So at the same time, those so in order to undermine the independence of nations, they have to bring in this kind of a, uh, the neo-colonial setup where they bring all these particular nations under this common wealth for the elite, basically, not for the people, uh, and, and, and then they set up. So in our, in, in, through, through such method, they continued the economic, economic domination. We still buy still on tea. So they, they continued that economic domination uh, through such a setup, which is also, of course, the common wealth then eventually changed. At the time, it's called British common wealth. But then they got rid of the British, the term, in the name afterwards. I mean, that, that overall, the economic control is continued. But, that, but, uh, but they did not have a similar set of the uh, action scenes. But it also poses a question for us now in terms of how, how we take it out. How, you know, we live in Britain, in, uh, we pay tax here. This particular uh, 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 country, the role, what they play in these uh, neo-colonial countries, former colonies, they still play a very bad role. In, in, uh, in 2010, you know, there was a memo leaked in terms of accusing the Commonwealth uh, Secretary saying, you know, do not talk about human rights. So I don't think we should actually have that. Into, uh, we, can talk, we should tolerate that anymore. And then we should make our voice heard properly in terms of saying no. In what way we can say that? How would I, I mean, this year, a Commonwealth meeting is supposed to be taking place in Sri Lanka with all these uh, people going to go down there. Uh, already, um, our minister were there trying to kind of soften up, uh, soften up, um, um, you know, what is going to, what is going to come. I think it's likely that the Commonwealth meeting will continue in Sri Lanka. But as a community, a big community, it's not a voiceless community. It's a voiceless community in terms of the British media and the British other uh, movements that exist in this country not taking up this particular plight for various other reasons with which we should discuss. But it is, it, it is not a voice, it has raised voice in a very powerful way in many, in many times we have seen. And not a, uh, in a community, I don't think in a, uh, there's any precedence in the history in Britain where a, a significant majority, over 90% of the people on the street together expressed no and then still not listened to, not a single media <laughs> represented their voice. And there was a small cutting in the metro, I remember. So that is a situation that we have to break. And then since then, you know, well, there are various young people in a lot of campaigns and so on, and we were able to change the situation to an extent, but not completely actually succeeded in that. So there is a, there is a big pro, uh, campaign in front of us in terms of how we can raise the kind of awareness in terms of what is going on. And also there are a few other organizations trying to teach us unity and trying to, through, through that, trying to kind of make us comply with the, uh, uh, with the uh, 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 Sri Lankan government and so on. So we have to fight that as well. Finally, before I finish, one point is that there is two power bases in every country. One that of the government and government organization. The another is of the people and the, uh, the, uh, uh, their organizations. And we uh, were quite glad that we invited a couple of uh, people today to come and uh, uh, speak.
speak on, on the behalf of the other organizations, the other power base as well. But it's a trade union movement, and the people who represent various organizations, the uh, various organizations here will represent people, uh, and and the trade union movement. I, we think that trade unions should put up a voice and say, look, we stand for the human rights. We oppose this particular Commonwealth taking place, uh, the meeting taking place there. They should come out in support of the community. At the same time, the community should express their understanding uh, and uh, and support to those who are willing to defend them. So it has to be in both ways. But before I just finish, uh, and, and uh, we, uh, just one one more thing, one point is that we this is a kind of a political background of the situation in terms of what is independent, why we gathered today, and so on. But of course, the next part of the meeting, we wanted to strictly discuss the uh, organizational stuff rather than going into the political thing. So I'll urge everybody to comment and say anything about the political background in the first part of the discussion, and then we'll carry on to the next one. Thanks. Any questions for Senator? translate that into Sinhalese, and that's how he became a racist. And then the 1915 riots is purely between the Muslims and the uh, Buddhists, purely on the, not on business or anything, it's actually the temple, <coughs> the Vihara, uh, uh, they, they didn't want the Muslims, uh, the uh, mosque, and they didn't want the Buddhists to march close by, and the uh, British had ordered them they should be about a kilometer away, but still they insisted because it's their land, they want to come in. That's why the rats came in. And the misunderstanding with the Tamils is because Sir Ponapalam Ramnathan took a risk and came here to get here Sednak and them. That was the biggest mistake half people did. They should have been allowed to be shot by the martial law the government at that time. Any other questions for Sam? Any other comments? I just want uh, to thank you for the speaker. Did you mean Chandran was not the correct leader by accident? Or just to be that Chandran, I am the first being elected as a democratic leader of the Tamil school, support him as a, it's not a correct leader. It's not, it's not the right expert here at this forum. I think I suggest that. And number two, on the human rights. <coughs> if this is an honest forum, you must talk of human rights in Sri Lanka from the pre independence time. Uh, how the Tamils themselves treated the estate, plantation Tamils, when they walked into the North Eastern provinces, and also how they treated their, their brothers in the North and East who you know, on the past list. So uh, let's not, you know, uh, this even this human rights here, just for the sake of getting, uh, you know, uh, the, the world community here or, or, or shout. Let's be honest and say, have we genuinely gave voice to human rights during the 30 years of war? No, because we were very silent and very, very terrible things were going on. So accept those realities and move forward. Be honest to yourself on human rights. Don't just use it for your convenience here and there. And all. That is number two. Number three. On the individualistic basis, they don't talk about it as far as, you know, Tamils as a whole, the collective. Did you just make collective? So, so, make so you cannot have, you know, human rights violation taking place within a number of people 
and then only think about you know at, at the at the apex level. So you know you have to build towards that. Mm. Okay. Uh, may I make something? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, on on my point of view, um, you know, um, in Sri Lanka for the you know last not I'm not talking about the last hundred years. Um, uh, even before, like uh, in the 15th, 16th century, uh, the history books of Sri Lanka are deliberately hiding the, the Tamil the contributions and uh, the Tamil governance existence in, in Sri Lanka. And also, um, you know, on, on my personal point of view, we, we, we missed lots of attempts to, uh, you know, demonstrate our uh, op opponents from even abroad or in Sri Lanka because uh, uh, we missed some, uh, you know, some time because the civil wars for civil wars for, for, for going for thirty years in Sri Lanka. Um, in, the, in the last days of the war, we were actually standing in Westminster and fighting, you know, uh, to stop the war. Uh, I felt uh, that was, you know, too late because we never showed our, you know, unity before that. So, you know, we should think of moving forward with, uh, you know, more, you know, unite, um, you know, um, sort of achieving ways that we could even um, talk and um, you know, uh, fight for ourselves, fight for our freedom. Even there is nothing happening in Sri Lanka because there is always a need until we get our own rights to fight, to you know, get there. Not when just something happening there. We just go and stand there. Nobody is going to listen to us. Um, yeah, just to add to your point, I think, yeah, I agree with you. self-determination of the Falkland Islands, which she has recently in a dispute with Argentina. The Foreign Office says that self-determination is a human right for all people, but it seems not for Tamil <coughs> or, or others. So that's the problem, is that it's very selective. Self-determination, if you support the outcome. If you don't support the outcome, then suddenly the side. And I think Thank this you. is the one thing that people should be pushing more than anything. Because human right abuses occur to as individuals everywhere. Even in Britain and everywhere else, individuals get trodden on from time to time. But as a collective, uh, self-determination is a collective human right, and it's one that Tamils and other peoples, for that matter, should be banging that drum very soundly and embarrassing the West for talking about self-determination, even the UN, but never practicing it. Yeah, I think the thing with uh, yeah, self-determination is it's a collective human right. So it doesn't promote the idea of individualism. And I agree with you on the point that with the West, they usually tend to favour certain places over other when talking about human rights or humanitarian intervention. It's in, usually in regions that are of strategic importance to them, favour their interests. And um, so, and w one other point that I'd like to make is, um, as far as as far as the West, um, what Senator building on what Senator mentioned earlier, um, can, can we can the West help Tamils? And what Western powers actually provided? Sri Lanka government with uh, weaponry, war intelligence, and, and military training as well. And 40% of the hardware that was sold to the Sri Lankan government between 83 and 2003 came from its closest allies, which is the US, uh, US, the UK, and Israel. So um, a national liberation movement or are inherently against anti-imperialists. So they're against, they're against the interests of the West. So can we really expect lobbying Western governments to be in, can we really expect um, like lobbying against Western governments to achieve anything? I don't think it's an effective strategy. What we need to do is we need to ally with other oppressed people and that requires destroying certain prejudices that, in, that exist between not just the Tamil community within the Tamil community but within many communities of you know, oppressed peoples. So we need to, we need to destroy that division. And 
say if we have a pa Palestinian solidarity society here, they, they suffer from many of the same problems that we do as well. So if we and it's they know more about oppression than say Western countries. Yeah. So there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of yeah. people around the world, even in Mali now. In the north, in Tuareg, they created the state, the Islamists hijacked it, and now the French are moving in and possibly destroying another people, in effect. So there's lots and lots of people in exactly the same boat as Tamils. And the Tamils and they need to work together as a counterweight to what presently exists. But the final point on the West, although the West has an economic interest um, which dictate their policy, nevertheless, they supposed to support the principle of self-determination. The United Nations Charter, Article 1, talks about self-determination. The Decolonization Declaration talks about self-determination. All of their policies are underpinned by that principle, even though in practice they don't follow the principle because they believe in maintaining the borders globally. We've had meetings with, with ministers who have admitted that, you know, off the, re off the record. So it's very important, I think, that we need to unite with other groups as to create a counterweight to the present system. And um, just going on that as far as you talk about different nations and peoples and their rights and self-determination. Uh, one interesting point is there are, there are 6,000 nations without a state in currently in the world and 2,000 of them are in India. So you can see where geopolitics plays into this because if the Tamils do gain some type of independence or autonomy within Sri Lanka, that will give ideas to the 2,000 nations without states in India which is against the interests of multinational corporations and whatnot who, who you know, operate within India. Um, just, I think we're running out of time. Is there any other yeah. burning questions or anything? Yeah. I, just, I just got a question. Um, I'm just, so just, just saying, trying to add to what you very well uh, put in terms of what the history of presidency says. What, what Tamils in Sri Lanka are resisting against is this uh, occupation of... Um, it's a bit loud. Occupation. So, occupation by who? And we need to look at Tamil sovereignty first of all. Um, did we have it? A lot of, lot of um, uh, our friends outside of uh, Tamil population misunderstand it. They think that we are, look, we are we are fighting for, we are asking for separation of a country. No, we are we are we are trying to reclaim the lost sovereignty. Who did we lose it to? We didn't lose it to the British. We didn't we didn't lose it to uh, the English neighbors. We lost it to Portuguese. In I'm not a historian, so uh, you don't have to uh, shoot me uh, when I get the dates wrong. Uh, it's I think 15 something. There's a document signed by Tamil King surrendering the Tamil sovereignty to the Portuguese, and that sovereignty was then assigned to Dutch when they removed Portuguese out of the island. And then came the British, and the, the, the Tamil sovereignty was again assigned to the British. And it's only after the assignment British went and captured the Kandian Kingdom, unifying that, that three, three kingdoms in that, in that landmark. Now, so it's not that we are asking for something they, uh, the, the Singlese even captured from us. We are asking for something that we lost to Portuguese. They're not even in the scene now. So sovereignty is not some, something that fancy thing we plucked out of the air. It, it, it's, some, it's something that we had. We lost to someone else. Somebody, and, and three other people have, have uh, taken taken that from each other. So it's it's not Ulam, again Ulam. Ulam is not a policy of anyone. Ulam is not a theory. It's name of the country. Ulam is the name of the country. And you know we can have uh, an amendment to that name if we want to, but we don't want to at the moment. So <laughs> don't don't blame us if we call our country what we uh, what it uh, what it has always been. So actually, uh, I don't understand what you're talking about, Ulam. Ulam is the homeland of the Tamil people. No, no. The, the whole of the Ulam was yeah. called Ulam. No, the whole land, actually, Old, the whole zone actually belonged to the Tamils. Oh, no. uh, well, unexpectedly, actually, the, the Buddhists came from different part of India, <coughs> entered in our country. Yeah, that, That's yeah. why we lost a lot of land. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there is a version of history. Yeah, like that's that. a political yeah. story. Yeah. Event. Yeah. Uh, actually, about, uh, another thing, actually, the United Nations is not functioning properly because they don't 
understand the meaning of solidarity. They don't understand the meaning of democracy. Actually, they speak about democracy and solidarity, but they are not doing anything. All culprits are in the United Nations. There is a society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. Where is the society for the prevention of cruelty to the human being? <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you answer this question? Yes. Uh, actually, everything they speak democracy. There is no de real democracy in the world. They said India is a democratic country. No. India is not. Re uh, it's not a. Uh, not, it's, it's not a democratic country. India is full of corruption. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm sorry to say. Why is it true? Democracy yeah. as we know it in Sri Lanka will not work for Tamil. Why democracy as we know as, as they have it in Sri Lanka will not ever represent Tamil? I'll tell you why. Because in 1977 election, that's the highest number of uh, parliamentary seats obtained by uh, Tamil Party, 17. We were the main opposition uh, in Parliament. To pass any bill, do you need to rely on any other Tamil votes? No. Where, where is the voice to come? It will never happen. It will never ever happen. I think we, we, we have very important discussions straight after what we have But I still have to be very, very shortly as possible. Of course, we can have the discussion afterwards. And the students here, they hold meetings regularly as well. And we can definitely come on to the discussion further on. But I agree with some of the points about the, the Mabala in terms of that, exactly the point about missionaries and how they learned it to be very, you know, and so. But the point about Eskevi Chelvana and this step, but what I was saying is, it's not really kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not kind of putting a profile on Chelvana. I was saying one question in which is relevant to all we're going to discuss today, later on, is the boycott thing that took it out at the time earlier stage in terms of uh, before 1934 election, they boycotted it. And they still, the Tamil was one of them. The party the election. 1931. In 34, they were 31 all voted. election. No, no, they, 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 they successfully managed to get the election in 1934 and won. But SJB and uh, three others boycotted in 34. And 31 is charged. So the, that, that's, what, that's the only point that I was making. We discussed about whether it's, you know, let us just see the difference. Um, and on the question about the human rights, absolutely, I think everybody would agree here, the human rights is not just human rights for this or that person, for this or that thing, it's a universal human rights we talk about. Universal human rights means, you know, human, you know, it's the same thing, it's not that we are concerned about the Thomas being people in Sri Lanka, it doesn't mean that we would support the oppression taking place in Congo or somewhere else. It's, it is a universal human right that we talk about, and we have to be very very sharp on that, and, uh, and I continue to do that in terms of so on. But I'll also just finally on one point in terms of uh, sovereignty and so on. When we talk about righteous self-determination, we talk, talk about it as a right for the people. It's part of any other democratic rights, of course, but also not in the same way as some of the, I don't know, David or Cameron or the <laughs> talking about, or any other people, where they talk but then, then is sovereignty, which means we can keep the existing borders and we will defend you. For example, in Sri Lanka, from that particular point of view, there is no right to self-determination exists for any other. So we don't really talk from that particular point of view. A little bit different, that's just one of the points. But also, the next discussion is, for the past seven already, is that, um, I, I, of course, I, I, you know, this, discussion is not finished, it's very brief, but I, I thought we thought we should have that before we go into other discussion in order to prevent actually going into the history and various aspects of, uh, <coughs> various aspects rather than actually focus on organization and think in terms of how we can put our voice. Particularly, I urge everybody to kind of focus on what they're saying in terms of organization layout. And uh, why is an, I'm, 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 both I read the chair and I'll take all the chair. We'll be very, very strict. There's a lot of people here and not enough time to kind of pack in everything. Very, very strict. And please focus on the points itself. And why is it we'll introduce from the BTF, British Tumble Forum, uh, uh, some, well, some proposal in terms of, in relation to what we're going to discuss. And then let's keep it very, very specific, uh, uh, our discussion. Thank you, Senator. Um, 
going to briefly start with um, what is BTF yeah. because we have lots of um, new players and um, we have a good number of people here today. <coughs> um, I think many of us know what is what is BTF um, and uh, you know, what, what we have been doing um, for the past um, five years since um, um, 2006. Um, you know, we, we have done a lot of um, protest in 2009. We're currently working with um, um, youth and bringing in um, um, youth from the UK and um, you know, empowerment, um, empowerment and, you know, um, and for them like to learn history like we did today throughout the Bini. Um Also, we did political advocacy um, in the parliament, working with the MPs, all party parliament group. Um, you and human rights work, we've been doing that for three years and we have lots of young people working um, in that team. Um, and we have other other teams, media, humanitarian work um, and so on. So what we want to do is we want to um, more young people come forward and join our team, uh, join BTF and be part of it. Um, now we move on to um, the campaign, the boycott Sri Lanka. Um, as you can see from the slides, I put save, save a nation from genocide. I know we talked about a lot of history, um, and you, some of you already mentioned, um, Tamils lost our sovereignty um, and you know, the, uh, the Sinhalese, uh, the Sri Lankan government, the Sri Lankan state, is destroying the Tamil nation. And we believe, uh, you know, rightly, um, um, Graham pointed out, it is genocide. Um, what we have today in Sri Lanka is end of war in 2009, over 40,000 people killed um, by you know, Sri Lankan um, Bishop of Manna, um, um, is a um, civil society um, organization. He, 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 he was saying that it's like over 146,000 people are still alive. Um, and since the war ended in 2009, um, the Sri Lankan government um, militarily occupied the Middle East and they brought in 18 amendments to the constitution to keep right about the family um, in power, transferring a um, state of emergency into promotion of those amacks, no accountability, um, no appetite to address the root cause of the conflict. Um, the continued construction of genocide against Tamil, um, land grab, no traffic change, um, no freedom of speech, respect to human rights, um, indefinite detention to political uh, prisoners. And recently, um, as you can see um, on the slide, impeachment of um, Chief Justice, um, which a lot of um, international NGOs um, says there's no separation between the um, justice system and the, and, and the government and the state. Um, so it was for that reason, you know, the Tamils cannot have um, spare justice for all the crimes, all the human rights violations they've had um, for the past 65 years since um, Ceylon became independent. So, I mean, that's the reason we're calling for the international independent investigation, for the even war crimes, crimes against humanity and the ongoing genocide. We need to have international involvement to address the issue. Going to um, um, Commonwealth, because you know this, this campaign, we want to start with um, the Commonwealth because that's an attention um, uh, in the international arena. Everyone talking about boycott Sri Lanka uh, uh, 2013, 2014. Um, we want to do two different ways. That we want to start with um, boycotting children 2013, but we will, the campaign, the boycott campaign will, will continue after children. Um, so as you can see, that um, the Sri Lankan government violates all the co common Commonwealth values, you know, which, um, the democracy, human rights, and rule of law. Um, Commonwealth in the past. You know, they acted against um, apartheid in South Africa, which worked really well. Um, in Zimbabwe, against Robert Robert Mugabe, they brought in sanctions, um, which, um, you know, the Mugabe government formed a coalition with the opposition. So it worked. Um, economic sanctions, um, campaigns, um, throughout the world, did work, um, did work in those countries. 
Um, we, we do not understand why the Commonwealth being selective in the case of Sri Lanka. Um, you know, um, rather than punishing Sri Lanka for what they have done, they're rewarding Sri Lanka um, by giving an opportunity for Sri Lanka to be forced until 2013. The main aim of, um, for the Sri Lankan government is, is not just uh, forcing the until 2013, it's that, um, especially in the Commonwealth Business Forum uh, meeting, they look into bringing over 1,000 um, multinational companies to Sri Lanka and make them invest. Um, and they want to have a development which benefits in the, the capitalist ideology and, you know, all for the, for the single community to benefit from it. Um, these developments are not empowering the Tamil, Tamils in the North and East. So it is important um, the international community and the Commonwealth, the 54 nations, see that and have a very change. Um, before Trump 2013, we should focus on, um, you know, boycotting and asking the Commonwealth leaders to boycott, um, and also um, targeting multi multinational companies um, for them um, to see what's really happening and what's the real agenda behind, behind it, um, having Trump 2013 in Sri Lanka. We, we, we need to persuade them. Um, that's saying that you know, Sri, Sri Lanka are behaving against the international norm, democracy, human rights, and rule of law. Um, and so we, so we should approach these, identify these multinational companies and um, approach them and explain to them the situation what we have in Sri Lanka. Um, probably they don't see that. I mean, Darman doing, doing a very good campaign. Um, you know, we're talking about um, what Tamils Tamils and everyone say that. In 2009, the war ended, but the conflict still on. The conflict's not finished. Um, the Sri Lankan government have a different view. And they're saying that the conflict is finished, the people in Sri Lanka are moving on with their, with their, their life. So, a boycott, boycott alone, um, having um, that, um, you know, persuaded the, the Commonwealth leaders not to go to Sri Lanka would not have the, the real results for what, what we need. We need to have both the, the boycott by, by the business leaders and we've got to, we've got to ask the CMAC, the Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group, to change the venue. You know, they can do that. It's still not too late to change the venue. Unless they have a change of venue, the, the, uh, the Trouble 2013 is still ahead. Even if Prime Minister Stephen Harper did not attend, or the Prime Minister uh, David Cameron don't go there, um, the Commonwealth will happen, the ministers, the, um, the business will invest, and the Sri Lanka will benefit from it. So, what we want to target is campaign to boycott um, Trouble 2013 in Sri Lanka is that we need to target high street multinational companies. I know I can um, some of the campaign, and you, you can share that with us. Um, I think we need to continue to do that, and uh, with, the, with the support of other organisations and uh, trade union. Um, we also need to campaign the business council to cancel the Combo Business uh, Forum 2013. Um, we need to do protests. We need to do that campaign, and we need to meet them, you know, face-to-face -face meeting campaigns um, to persuade them to change. Um, there are. Um, 105 companies, multinational companies, are member with the Commonwealth Business Council. First, we need to target them. We need to book an appointment. We need to write to them, and we need to persuade them not to um, invest in Sri Lanka, not to go to um, Trouble 2013. And um, and also um, the campaign, the CMA countries, for example, um, Canada, um, South Africa, Australia, group, you know, nine countries there. We need to persuade them to. Put um, Sri Lanka venue changes and agenda for the next meeting, <coughs> and strengthen political support. We have, you know, we're doing debates, parliamentary debates, and Canadian Canadians doing a lot of work. And other country, um, Tamils as well as other other NGOs doing a lot of work. We need to strengthen that. We need to do more on that to get the political support, so people can write to MPs, MEPs, and uh, letter campaigns and e-campaigns.
So even after the Chulum 2013 is finished, the, the, the boycott campaign should continue targeting tourism, um, Sri Lankan airlines, unethical investments, and Sri Lankan cricket. Um, what, what, what we want to do, um, what, what's the end, end target is, is that, that you know, we need to bring economic sanctions against Sri Lanka, travel, travel ban for the um, Raj, Raj, Rajapaksha regime, so more and more Rajapaksha families are in the government. We need, to, we need to get the support of international community to ban them from traveling and doing business, and suspend Sri Lanka from um, Commonwealth. See, um, Maldives, they have moved to coup recently, and they suspended um, uh, Maldives uh, from Commonwealth. Um, why Sri Lanka is different? I mean, they, they kill more people than uh, Maldives. And, um, you know, take Pakistan, they've been suspended several times. Um, the same with Zimbabwe, but, um, but um, um, Sri Lanka being exception um, to those uh, Commonwealth actions. So more actions against Sri Lanka are due in this um, General Assembly and the Human Rights Council. I know that um, DSP Plus um, is under review, I think, in 2015. 2014. So we need, to, we need to work on that to extend and a similar GSP kind of sim similar um, um, tax um, support to Sri Lanka should be withdrawn from uh, American um, kind of a GSP as well. So we need to work on these things. And I know USD PAC in, in, in America are doing a great job. I think we need to support, we need to spend it, we need to write to um, um, whoever um, in charge of that. Um, finally, what we want to do today is that we need to bring in student unions and student support. I know there are several organi Tamil organizations um, are here today. They should come forward and take responsibility uh, for individual campaigns. Um, trade unions, you know, we want, we want to listen to you how we can improve um, um, our, our voice of campaign and your experience um, and, and your support to mobilize people. Um, Individual activists, that, you know, there's people that are not part of any organization, but you can um, join BTF or, or Tamil Solidarity, you know, work with us to, to, um, to campaign and, um, you know, either um, work a campaign against the uh, Martin Spencer or um, Tesco's or e-campaigns um, or, or, you know, other form of campaigns we will, be, we will be doing. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a campaign every week individual organizations taking responsibility uh, to mobilize people for those um, uh, for those venues. Um, if you can't even come to the, um, come, come from the protest, um, you can work from home. Um, you can do um, Twitter campaigns or writing letters to um, um, these organizations, the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Secretary. Those kind of activities we need. Today, when we leave this building, what we want to have is that people have People walking with the plan, you know, they know what they're going to do till November. Thanks, Abraham, and that's a short and sweet. Um, just, uh, I mean, following from what Wallison said, of course, these kind of campaigns is extremely uh, difficult in relation to how we, um, in terms of without engaging, you know. The, Populations here and so on, it's very, very difficult to um, uh, get anywhere. And of course, there are a lot of experiences here we can share in terms of difficulty we'll come across. And quite uh, correctly, like Wagis and said, you know, we invited um, uh, uh, Rob Williams, from uh, he's the national chair of the National Soft Steward Network, which is set up by the RS.